Hello, today I'm going to teach you how to use VLOOKUP and SUMIF together, particularly in a manufacturing setting, or any setting you may use materials to build something. I already have my part numbers selected, and they, those will generate uh, automated fields already, but they're actually in the numbers section. I already created them. For the sake of the demonstration, you can copy down the same numbers, or you can create your own set of numbers that you will understand. After you complete your set of numbers, you can continue. So I set it up as in the date of which it happens, which doesn't get pulled from any other formula. You will manually enter in the part number, so you will have to memorize part numbers or have them with you. Or you can do a drop down menu depending on how many numbers are in your company. And then the quantity you'll obviously enter by hand as well. But the, but the name will pop up, the type will pop up, and the price will pop up. If you're not familiar with the VLOOKUP command, when you click on it, it'll say the lookup value, which is B2, so we want to look up that number, and our table array is in the numbers area. And then the very last two parts of it, the column index number, that means which column is it going to reference when it looks up that part number, and false means you want to match that number exactly. When you do true or you leave it blank, it will round up to find an answer, and that will not guarantee your, the perfect answer. So if we go back to numbers, the part number is column 1, and the name is column 2, as you can see we get once we put in the part number. Scrap or damage or shipping damage, or however you want to describe it, can be put here, and that will come into this area later. I would recommend trying to keep it to one or two phrase words, so when you separate it by some myth, it is much easier. The type is going to be, follow the same formatting, but we will use column 3, because column 3 has the type, but we'll still be referencing the part number for this information. And same with the single price. We'll be referencing column 4, which has the price of each part. Then obviously the total price will be the single price multiplied by the quantity. As you see, a single axle is 100 times 4, grants us a total of 400. Now, you can add that up to 8,000, the total cost, but that really doesn't tell you much. So what you can then do is separate by scrap and damage cost, then bearing and shipping. So, to do that, you'll do sum if, and what, and what you want to do first is the criteria, or the range, you're not going to select your numbers first. That's a common misconception. So select your range of what criteria you want. Then the next one, select it. So you want to say out of all of those, anything that says scrap, that's what I want to sum in H2 through H12. And when we do that, we get 7,000. And we'll do the same for damage. We'll go anything with damage in this range. We'll then sum over there. And then once we go to bearing, we're going to go anything with bearing, we'll sum, and then the same with shipping. Anything with shipping, we'll then sum. This can be really useful because when you have just a total number, you really don't know how much you're damaging or you're scrapping, or you can go back through and take a quick glance. But this really allows you to understand if you're damaging more than you are scrapping, or you're scrapping more than you are damaging, or maybe the company that delivers your products is actually damaging a lot of them before they even get in. So you can consider changing shipping companies. This is just a small taste of what it can do. You can decide to add more numbers. You can shoot, You can uh, switch it up depending on your company. But this is a general setup we use in my company. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope this was helpful.